Hi, uh, welcome to the Melbourne Instruments booth. My name's Rex. At NAM this year, we're showing our new MIDI controller. It's a motorized MIDI controller for software and hardware. It features uh, the motorized knobs that you've seen in the Nina and Delia synthesizers, as well as user assignable buttons and other controls. The device itself has eight knobs and eight buttons, and then we have this small control console over here that helps you with the navigation and the setup of the device. Um, the unit itself has three main modes of operation. As you can see, we've got MIDI, plug-in, and mix. MIDI is like a typical old school MIDI controller. You just learn the channel and the CC, and then you have control. But using our software configurator called Roto Setup, you can change the haptic feedback, you can assign labels and colors to the device. And all of those settings are actually saved inside the Roto Control, allowing you to take it elsewhere, work with other people's machines and in other sessions. So let's jump into MIDI mode first. You can see when I press MIDI, we have some uh, learned assignments here already. Um, and we've also labeled them and colored them. You could be doing this with hardware, like an electron device, for instance, or you could be doing it with another DAW, doing MIDI Learn of Logic or something like Cubase. And then you can save the setups with a name and always have them there for recall. The device itself will store up to 64 different setups and we've got the eight pages we can step across there. And within each setup itself, you have 64 knob assignments and 64 button assignments. So 128 controls in a single MIDI device, giving you heaps and heaps of control. Uh, the, we can customize how stuff looks here. So we quickly go back to the setup itself and I'll just bring up our configurator now and show you how we can change that. So the device is connected, so the setup can also reflect the values on the screen in the, in the uh, configurator. So let's go to piano and we can easily change the name of how that works. Let's call it keys instead. And there the changes happen. So now you can see that the labels change the keys and we want to change the color. That's pretty instantaneous. We can zip in there, change the color, and already the color of keys has changed on the MIDI control. Um, by default, when you set most of these things up in MIDI mode, it's going to work like a standard potentiometer with end stops at either end, but with the configurator, we have the ability to uh, change the haptics and like put it into a step mode or like a switch. So now it's got five steps assigned and rather than feel like a pot, it's actually a five position switch you see as I move around there. So heaps of control within MIDI mode. And we've also have the addition of a motion recorder. So when I press this, it opens up the transport controls of the MIDI device and we can control the first eight parameters in each setup and record motion to those. So when I press function, you can see that we can determine the BPM we can determine where the clock is and we can also determine the length of the loop itself. So let's make the loop a little bit longer. We'll go to 64. I jump out of there. I hit the transport and we're ready to record some motion. So there's already some in here, but we can further record and almost overdub the motion itself. And then as it reaches the end of that 64 step loop, the motion is playing back and that would be affecting an external device like a sequencer, a synth, maybe a drum machine. And that's loads of fun. That's a new feature that we don't have on the synths. Let's jump into one of the other modes now. So I'm just going to hit stop on that, jump out of the transport and we go mode. And let's take a look at mix mode. So mix mode is more integrated with Ableton Live. So you can see that straight away the Roto Control reflects the track names and colors that you see in Ableton Live, giving you like a great visual indicator of what channel you're actually controlling at one time. We're also touch sensitive, so as we move around, touch each knob, we have instant navigation of the channels themselves or the tracks. By default, 
the knobs control volume and the buttons control track on and off. So when I'm turning a knob, it's affecting the volume. And when I press the button itself, it's the track activation. If you want to adjust other settings, we simply press select. And then I could choose pan as the knob control and I can choose solo for the buttons. And now we're soloing each track and the knobs themselves are actually moving the pan. And then by pressing the function key, we actually have a channel focus. So rather than have to determine what you want the knob to control, we can see all four of those parameters at one time. And similarly, if I do this button combination, we're able to see the sends and returns within each, within each track. Um, the unit will uh, host up to 64 trucks. So if I jump out of there, you can see that we can quickly skip across the 32 trucks that are active in live, Ableton Live, and we can go up to 64 and still have that reflected on the unit. The other great mode we have is plug-in mode. So let's go back to mode, we hit plug-in. Let's jump to a truck up on the device that has a plug-in associated with it. So lead 303, and we've got an Acid V plug-in here and another one we've set up. And you can see that we've already learned some of the parameters within the, um, within the plug-in itself. This is the Acid V plug-in. And we've learned all these controls based on how we want to use the plugin itself. And that control, the order of the setup, the color is really in the hands of the user. You can start to define what it looks like, what the position of the, of the parameters, even the way the knobs behave, whether that's a step switch, whether it feels like a pot and so on. So. If you wanted to learn a new uh, parameter within the plugin itself, all we have to do is press the learn button and then I touch the knob I'd, or button I'd like to learn. So this one here is now waiting for me to learn something on the plugin. To do that, I go up to the plugin and simply move the value and instantly that's learned back down here. And you can see that we've now got cut off assigned to that button. Because it's a button, you see that basically it's an on-off action. And we also have other control that we can add to that if we go back to our configurator. So for instance, let's bring up Roto Setup again. And we'll take a look at the cutoff that we just set. And the, all these values are a change. So we can actually set a minimum value to, let's say 20. And we'll set the maximum value to around 70. And then when we come back to the device and back to Ableton Live, you can see that let's jump back to resonance and you can see up here now uh, cutoff was the one I set, sorry, that our minimum and maximum values are associated with how far that will travel. And you could also do the similar thing with the knob setup. Um, the unit itself will also save all the plugins internally. And when you go through a different session or open a different project in Ableton Live, the unit will remember those plugins. And every time you go to a track associated with that plugin, it will automatically populate and bring up all your predefined settings. As I said before, select shows us the other available uh, plugins on the track and the function button lets you actually jump out to the tracks and change tracks without having to go back to Ableton Live or click the mouse and do stuff like that. So let's jump to audio four. You can see there's no setups there. I think if we go to Vox, now you can see that there's a plugin here called AMP. We've already learned a bunch of the parameters on that one. You can see that this one bass, and as I turn that, it's reflected up here. Right now that's like a potentiometer, but we could easily jump back into the configurator and change the value. So let's press function again, jump back to lead 303, 
and you can see back on screen that not only does the device allow you to follow the plugins, but when I click another plugin, Roto Control will actually follow to and recognize the active plugin and change the values on the device to show all of that. Uh, we also have dedicated transport control for Ableton Live, so this little tape icon brings up your standard Ableton Live transport control. And with a simple press of the play button, we can activate the track up on Ableton and do all of that without having to really take your hands off the roto control itself. And in a nutshell, that's kind of how the device works. There's lots of other features kind of under the hood and it's really open to the user how you set it up and how you interact with the device. I can show you a little automation. So let's go to MIDI mode where we can go to the motion recorder. So we've got some pre eight predefined buttons here. So each of these is recording motion or has record motion. So now I press the transport and I'm going to press play and already the motion that's been recorded previously is active and if this was connected to a hardware device or a synth we could be sending that automation to the device and but with Ableton the um, automation is mostly done in Ableton Live and you would see the automation of Ableton Live then reflected on the control panel just like we're seeing it here in MIDI mode so I can also erase the motion, so let's just press erase. I choose this one, I commit, and this one stopped moving. Essentially, it's waiting for us to record more motion in, so I press record again, and then I'll sweep it backwards and forwards a couple of times, and as soon as it gets to the end of that 64-step loop, it should start to play, and there we go. So, lots of fun, just like Nina and Delia. If you like to see knobs move around, this is maybe the device for you. Um, it's shipping now. The price in the US is $419, and it should be available at your favorite synthesizer store from next week onwards. To find out more about the Roto Control from Melbourne Instruments, please visit their website and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV. You're watching CatSynth TV.